Hello everyone, Nadlabs here. Today we're going to be making Pong very quickly in the good old game engine version 4.2.2 stable. Um, and let's get right into it. So Pong quickly. And I'm going to be going over very simple concepts such as making players, making a ball, bouncing a ball, kinematic collision 2D, and as well as um, basic enemy AI. So let's start off with the world. Kind of speed running it, kind of also just making a tutorial, kind of getting the idea of, kind of sending the idea of how people make um, uh, games and also I am messing up already but I'm trying to get a character body 2d character body 2d as the name suggests will let me you know move around a character so we're gonna add a sprite for the paddle and then we're gonna add a collision shape for the um, because Godot yells at you if you don't have one as you can see here so I'm gonna just add the collision shape and if you're wondering how I added nose I just click this plus button or I use the control a shortcut so I'm gonna add this um, rectangle over here I'm going to click Shift G for these uh, grids, and I'm going to hold Alt to make this rectangle a bit like um, uh, size it proportionally. I'm going to drag the icon.svg, and I'm going to size it to, you know, be skinnier. And I'm going to match the uh, collision shape for that paddle. I'm going to change the visibility and the modulate for this, so I make it black. And there you can see that um, this uh, paddle is now black, and it's you know pretty good. Like it's just a regular old paddle, player paddle. I'll call it player paddle. Why not? Player paddle, and I'm just gonna make a player paddle. I'm gonna make a player paddle, you know, a, a folder, and then I'm gonna put the player paddle scene in it. And I'm gonna just create a new GD script file, which is how we control the node. And I'm gonna put in some basic code, such as in the physics process function, what do we wanna do? Well, we want a direction variable, and this direction variable is gonna be a vector 2, and it's going to be equal to vector 2. So obviously, we're not gonna move on the x axis, so we are not planning to move, if this is our game scene, we're not planning to move left or right because what type of Pong paddle does that? We only move up and down, right? Um, that's how classic Pong was made, so we're gonna do that. So we're gonna say get wider, and we're gonna make a function. We're gonna be calling a function here, get wider, and we're gonna make that function. We're gonna make that function like this, type in func, uh, F-U-N-C, and we're gonna type get wider, and we're, it's gonna return a, in, it's gonna return a float. And this float is actually going to be the return, like the, what we're returning. So what this is, is we're saying, we're telling Godot that this returns a float. This returns nothing. If we call this function, we get a float. And then we're returning. What are we returning? We're going to be returning input dot get action strength. Um, well, we haven't set any actions up yet. So I'm going to go to project settings up here in the top left. I'm going to click input map. And I'm going to say um, down and up. And maybe R, R for restart. So I'm going to click R for restart. So I'm going to click this plus sign next to the action I want to do and for up it's obviously W and you can add multiple like up is also the up arrow and you have down which is S and down is also um, the down arrow so yeah that works and we're gonna do down oops not UI down but just down down minus uh, we're gonna be minusing it by up so this uh, line over here or this function basically means this function over here basically means that we're gonna be doing down minus up so if I press down so if I press s it's going to be 1 minus and if I don't press up it's going to be 0 so 1 minus 0 is 1 and the get y direction is going to return 1 and this is going to be over here uh, this vector 2 is going to be 0 1 which is another way of saying down if I'm pressing the up arrow then when I press uh, up it's going to be 0 minus 1 0 minus 1 is negative 1 uh, negative 1 and if our vector 2 is 0 minus 1 that's vector up that's how this will work it's a you know 2d Cartesian plane and whatnot I'm not going to go that far into it, but velocity is going to be equal to direction times speed. We don't have a speed constant defined yet, so we're going to define that. So constant speed is going to be equal to, I don't know, something like 200 maybe. And um, yeah, that's fine. And we're just going to go back to our world scene. Oops. We're going to go back to our world scene over here. I'm going to instantiate a player paddle. And I'm just going to click uh, this uh, move tool or press W for the shortcut. And, you know, I'm going to drag it. So I'm going to click select current. And we can see nothing is happening. Why is nothing happening? Well, if we go back, we're, we're setting the velocity, but we're not moving and sliding. And the big part about this character body 2D is that move and slide has to be called in order to uh, move the character. So it moves the body based on velocity. And you can see over here, if I go to the script, we're actually setting the velocity of this character body 2D. As you can see here, I'm in a character body 2D documentation. And one of the variables it has pre-built is velocity, as the current velocity vector. Be used and modified during calls of move and slide and move and collide, which we'll see in a bit. So now you can see, I can move up and down. This is incredibly slow, so I'm going to set it to 800 or something. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, now we're going to add a ball. A ball is very simple to add. Um, we're going to go over here and add a new scene like this. 
I'm going to say other node for the current uh, root node, which is a parent node. And I'm going to say I want to do another character body 2D. Um, over here, I'm going to go back. I'm going to click F to center it on my screen. So as you can see, it's kind of off center. I'm going to click F to center. And I'm going to add a polygon. Polygon, yes. And I'm going to add a collision shape too. Collision shape. And on top of that, I'm going to just make a circle, you know. I'm going to make the circle about four grid spaces, default grid spaces wide. Um, if you're wondering how many, uh, what's the radius? It's 32. And I'm going to save it into its own control S to save. I'm going to save it into its own um, folder. So I'm going to make a ball folder. I'm going to call this ball. Ball, ball, ball. And I'm going to use the polygon 2D to generate a small ball. So as you can see over here, I'm going to click. It's going to make us like a little dot. And this is going to be the worst ball ever, but it will do for the purposes of this tutorial. We're going to add a script to this ball, like so, and we're going to basically make it bounce. So we have to define a constant for this ball. So maybe let's say the ball speed is, I don't know, maybe 400, half the player speed. And we're going to say that on the ready function, the velocity of this character, this ball is going to be a vector two, and it's going to be negative speed um, zero. And I want you to pause and think about what the hell this actually means. But if you think about it for one second, I'm going to say the answer in a few seconds, so pause. Okay, hopefully you thought about it, but this basically means that negative 400, uh, comma 0 is saying that the velocity is going to be this way. Because x is left and right, and negative x is this way, so we're going to go very fast in this direction. We're not going to be moving up or down, and we're not moving towards the right. Hopefully you got that. If you didn't, um, that's fine too. Uh, hopefully you learned from this. Anyways, uh, we're going to be moving on to our physics process function, which is where... Uh, this is called every frame, or this happens. Everything in this code, this function happens every frame. So we're basically going to say that uh, var collision is going to be equal to move and collide by velocity. Now, there's a lot happening in this line, so let's just unpack it. And basically what I'm saying is I'm going to be moving and colliding. So I'm going to move by this velocity, and I'm going to return a collision if a collision occurs. So if a collision occurs, what am I going to, what am I going to do? So if there's a collision... I'm going to get the collision normal. So I'm going to say normal is equal to call.normal, get normal. Um, and if you're wondering how I was able to like code hint that, that's very simple because this static typing over here with this colon equals is static typing. And this is actually a kinematic collision 2D. How do I know that? If I control click move and collide, I go to the documentation and up here, move and collide says motion. Um, it takes in a motion vector two and the rest are all kind of optional parameters. And it returns a kinematic collision 2D. And it says, returns a kinematic collision 2D, which contains information about the collision when stopped, touched against another body, another character body, for example, the player paddle. Um, and that will help us determine what the collision was about. And we can see if we open this up, the kinematic collision 2D has some information for us, such as get the normal, get the position of the collision. Like it gets us the full on, like if we have a circle over here and we have like a square, if these hit, then they would hit over here, right? And it would get us the normal. So the normal is something like uh, the perpendicular to the surface that it hit. This is basic math. And also it would give us, get us the exact x, y position. So that's pretty cool. And now that we have this, we can actually tell the velocity to dot bounce off of a normal. So Godot is su super cool and smart. But it will basically say that if you have a velocity like this and you have a normal, it will basically take this incoming velocity and bounce it. So we don't have to do any of this math calculation or these math calculations. For example, if this is the wall or whatever, and our ball was moving like this, then Godot would, would easily be able to calculate the normal and bounce the ball off. So even if the ball was coming like this, it would bounce off like that. Or if it was coming directly at the wall like this, it would bounce off like this. So Godot can do all those calculations for us. We don't have to do anything. And if we run the scene, hopefully, oh, we didn't even put the ball in. Um, if we instantiate the ball over here, so the ball is in, and we put the ball in front of the paddle, you can see it doesn't bounce. That's so strange. Why doesn't the ball bounce? So the reason the ball doesn't bounce is because bounce, this bounce function that is pre-built into vector two, returns a vector two. It doesn't modify velocity. So we actually have to say velocity equals velocity dot bounce normal. And now you can see that it moved too fast for us to see. And you see that the ball bounces off. Now, if I had a like a little box to house this in, so I'm gonna put a static body and I'm gonna make a few collision shapes. Now, this is very, very rough and nowhere near what you'd put in a finished game, unless you were kind of crazy. But if I have like a wall over here, like this is one wall. Um, this is another wall over here. And I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to rotate this and um, make, oops. If you're wondering how I'm doing all this, if you look in the top left, I'm actually switching between the various tools. 
So I'm going to expand this. If you're wondering why they're all expanding, they all share the same collision shape resource. So don't get alarmed. That's meant to happen. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate this and put it down here. Now you can see that if I run the scene, um, you can see that my paddle moves with the ball, first of all, and my ball doesn't really bounce that well. The reason is we have to go to our player paddle and we actually have to click on the player paddle and we have to set motion mode to floating. Uh, what this means is that this paddle is just floating in midair and it's not grounded to the wall. So it's, it's, take, it's taking this um, paddle as a kind of a conveyor belt or a moving platform in a platformer and it's dragging us along and we don't want that. So we have to set it to floating. Now it might look like the ball is bouncing off random things, but if we go over here to debug and visual and click visible collision shapes, then you can see over here that um, everything's working as expected. Like the ball is bouncing off of, you know, it's bouncing perfectly fine and the paddle's there. If you want to make a quick enemy AI version of the paddle, this is horrible to say, but if you just, oops, if you just copy this, copy the player paddle and paste it over here into a new scene and type enemy a paddle, right? Uh, disconnect the strip and you go back up here in the path and you click enemy paddle, paddle, and you just save a scene. And then you attach a script to this. Well, basically what we can do is we can just say, if we attach the enemy paddle over here, so enemy paddle, and we say on ready, so we make a variable called ball, and we just set it to uh, a character body 2D, or the type is going to be character body 2D, and in function ready. Uh, so when this enemy paddle over here is in this tree or in this world scene, we're going to say ball is equal to get parent dot get node. And you can see that we have a list because what Godot is saying, Godot is basically saying right now, okay, you want to get a node? Okay, well, we're going to get the parent. And it's actually thinking from this point of view. It's actually telling this an enemy paddle, get your parent. So get your parent and then ask the parent for nodes. So the node is a node, like a node in the scene tree. And one of them is player paddle, ball, static body, and all these collision shapes, as you can see over here, um, collision shapes. Oops, not that one, but you'll see over here down if I scroll, uh, different collision shapes. But what we want to get is ball. And once we have ball, we can basically say in the physics process function, I want my, I want the global position dot y of this enemy paddle to be equal to ball dot global position dot y. And now this is yelling at me for some reason. Okay, no, never mind. So now if I run the scene, you can see that the enemy paddle is having a bit of an issue. Um, that's because uh, it actually has to be over here like this. And when we run the scene, you will be able to see that the enemy paddle is following the ball or it's following the ball like basically perfectly. Now this is a horrible pawn, I'm gonna admit, but I wanted to get the super basics out there and you know, try making small simple games as fast as possible to deliver the most amount of knowledge. Um, that's all I have to say for this tutorial. Um, of course we can add a score system and whatnot and hopefully I'll do that in other tutorials, maybe longer ones, but that's all I have to do for now or that's all I have to say for now. Have an amazing day, goodbye. And if we're moving up, or if I'm pressing the up arrow, oh wow, I can't go back. Um, uh, and hopefully everything runs fine. This is taking a lot longer than I expected it would. Um, this is so weird. Why is Godot taking this long? Okay, maybe it's just the first run. Uh, of course, you can actually get a proper ball in if you wanted to, like a proper ball spray with bouncing animations and everything. But I am not that crazy for this tutorial or project, so I'm just going to do this, which I think is fine. So I'm going to lower the speed a bit and rerun the scene. Again, I'm going to lower the speed and rerun the scene. Okay, you can see the ball moved in the other direction. So let me just make it 50. Uh, oh, I made it 500. Oops, I was about to say that was really fast. Um, It bounced off, so I'll just lower the speed. Oh, it's too fast. I'm going to lower the speed once more. And you can see that the ball bounced. In fact, I'm just going to move the ball a bit away um, over here. Visible, visible collision shape.